RPG Maker Games To some of us, they are recent encounters that we have picked up for the first time. For others, they have been a huge part of our lives. They aren't just games, but stories and experiences that resonate to us that other types of games simply cannot even come close to. We have over 20 different sets of memories from people in the community that I hope resonates with your own memories of these including my own memories at the very end. So without further ado folks, thank you so much and enjoy the video. Thank you. 
When it comes to RPG Maker games, there is one that stood out to me that personally affected me on a very deep level, and that is Lisa, the painful RPG. And in one particular moment in this game, you are forced into a game of Russian roulette, and you can lose every single one of your party members. There is no way around it as well, it is a part of the story, you have to go through it. So this game has permadeath, so if any of your party members dies in the Russian roulette, they are gone for good. It is an essential RPG maker game and you absolutely should go check it out. Wow, RPG horror games, where do I begin? I was 14 when I played The Witcher's House with my cousins in my grandmother's very old computer. Solving the puzzles, getting immersed in the environment, feeling actually terrified were all exciting parts that drew me to the game and the community. 
I also really enjoyed reading the characters' lines in these games. I think part of me wanting to be a voice actor was speaking for these characters while going through the stories at the time. I actually got to voice Dio in a fan-made movie of Sen's Mad Father. The project got cancelled eventually, but I felt so driven when I was recording for him because Dio was my favorite part of the game. The ending where Dio is burning with the house and gives Aya that goodbye kiss is forever etched in my heart. As I got more experience in voice acting, I came across auditions for Yuri's The Hanged Man. Seeing as this was the final game, it was bittersweet to see it end, but I'm glad I got to be a part of it before it did, and had the opportunity to voice the past child version of the protagonist, Will. I still think about recording for the misery scene, because it's my favorite scene I'm in, and it brought out something in me I didn't really know I had. He speaks to misery as though misery is very much real, and you know, she is. But you also get a sense that Will is speaking to himself and trying to give himself advice. And in that sense, I felt I was speaking to myself and trying to control and console myself in that very moment. A scene I always think about is in Eve by Cory, when the party stumbles across the doll room, and even Mary sees rabbits, but Gary sees the doll of my deepest nightmares. I think I've actually had sleep paralysis dreams with those dolls, and knowing the possible endings for Gary did not help afterwards. But I think the scene and all these games have really added to my feelings of empathy and perspectives. All these stories have been told by someone, and as someone that's not a really big fan of horror, I didn't really play these stories to get scared, but to experience a creator's vision through a more uncomfy medium. I'm so glad I got to experience these games where I was in my life and for how it grew me as a human and as a creator. I love talking to the community about it afterwards and reliving the memories I have with these stories.
Hi everyone, this is Hind, known as Urai Online. Um, I wanted to talk about an RPG Maker game that I played uh, recently, um, like late last year, which really inspired me and affected me and got me all emotional and really invested in the story and the world and the characters. Uh, that game is Turo Viro, the Celestial Tower. Um, I played the demo a while ago and I was just waiting for the full game to come out. Um, and when it did come out, it really did not disappoint. The story is amazing. The music is fantastic. Um, the, inter the characters, the way they are written, uh, how battles play out, how the story plays out. It's all just a perfect, perfect um, mesh of all these elements. Um, for me, like I wanted to talk about a recent memory with the game, which is uh, when playing the full game, and um, you know, I continued playing and we reached a plot point where at that plot point the different routes start and the game was just like the different routes were done in so much detail and were just so um, specific to that route that I honestly thought, I thought this can't be one of multiple routes, this, this, this is the game, like it, it can't be anything else. And I was amazed to find out that no, there were different routes. So that was one thing that for me, like it's always something that stuck in my mind, like the level of detail. So it's not just, you know, one of four options and you know, whatever option you take, it's all the same for, except for my details. Um, and the other thing I loved with Intro Viro, and it's one of like, the things that I will remember the most out of any RPG Maker game is the twist. Like when we find out the names, the way that is done with the reveal of the name, the music, the flashbacks, the whole atmosphere, like that's just so powerful to me, how all, all of the names are revealed, especially the red name, um, like th those, that moment for me is just so like so amazing like it's it's like one of those things where when you you have fond memories of games that is a fond memory for me so so it might you know Turoviro is a rather recent game it came out in September of 2019 but for me like it's one of like it's it's always on my mind because it, it was such an amazing experience um, and I urge everyone to try out Turoviro because I think it's on it's on the road to becoming a classic in RPG makers um, and that's it that's uh, my RPG maker memory uh, I hope you guys liked it <laughs> thanks
When I hear the name RPG Maker, many different, amazing, wonderful games come to mind. Academia, The Living Playground, Grimm's Hollow, Friend Hunt, The Midnight Train, and so many, many more. RPG Maker games have had a huge impact on my life, from the very first time that I saw videos of The Witch's House and Crooked Man, just to name a few. I've honestly found myself more emotional and afraid of more RPG Maker games than most recent AAA games of late. In Mr. Kohei's Horror Show, for example, I was on edge from start to finish. There was always an overwhelming sense of dread in each room and each scene, and as more comes to light about the man you're playing as, the more you begin to fear of what other horrors are hiding in the dark. Even games such as Off that look to just be a surreal experience with every turn, turns into something so much more that leaves you questioning the choices that you're truly doing to this once colorful and confusing world. But it's not just the hor it's not just horror that RPG Maker is known for. Games such as Grimm's Hollow will truly pull at your heartstrings. It seems like a simple story on paper, a sister looking for her brother, but it turns into something that by the end of it left me crying. RPG Maker games are not just simple games that you can find on the internet. They truly can be doorways to the soul of the person that creates them. There's been so many great games that have come out of RPG Maker. Off, Ebe, The Witch's House, Smoke Echo Castle, Grey Garden, Angels of Death, Forest of Drizzling Rain, Doom and Destiny, and even that weird illusion game. All of those games have presented such surreal experiences that I will treasure for a very long time. Thank you very much for providing software to tell our own stories. What's up guys, my name is Chris Kane, and on my Let's Play channel I've completed about almost 100 RPG Maker Horror games, and in this tribute video I wanted to talk about why I like them so much. One of the things I think I, I appreciate the RPG Maker community is pretty much the game creators themselves. I feel like RPG Maker games, how uh, many years ago, how it kind of blew up in popularity with uh, some YouTubers playing games like Ouni, Witch's House, Ib, pretty much what got the whole train going is it opened a lot of doors for game developers, a lot of artists to be able to feature their art and be able to create amazing stories. Some games that we've seen is like the Hangman series that has Crooked Man, Sandman, Boogeyman, and the Hanged Man. Uh, you got games like Witches, uh, excuse me, Mermaid Swamp. Uh, story games like Witches House, kind of like visual novel games that uses really awesome pixel art. Uh, and then you have games that I feel like people don't necessarily know too much about, like Wizard of White Box, uh, Forest of Drizzling Rain, uh, Midnight Train, uh, and one of my uh, games that I actually visit, revisited recently was Pocket Mirror, uh, because they've been able to make some really awesome characters, have some really awesome designs, and really show themselves, um, really feature the art and everything else like that. Not only has the RPG Maker engine really opened doors for game developers to really start making games, but it also has opened doors, I think, for a lot of starting Let's Play channels. Uh, because RPG Maker games are one of the easiest games that I've been able to record, has given me less issues, and, uh, and is pretty, uh, with OBS being free, it's been very uh, easy for people to get their foot in the door when it comes to Let's Playing, and, and appreciating a lot of these stories and horrific uh, <laughs> scenarios you get put into. The RPG Maker engine has also been able to create games like Yuma Nikki, which uh, I really enjoyed streaming that game and be able to explore the bizarreness of the world that was created. And also, I really uh, enjoyed Corpse Party. Even though Corpse Party started out as an RPG Maker game, has opened doors to create the game that we know that uh, came out for PSP and Steam. After playing so many, the one thing that I do notice is that a lot of the games start out in a pretty similar way, where the character gets kind of dropped into a scenario with no real explanation of how that character got there. But other than a side of all that, and uh, making interact the enter button rather than Z, uh, I really have enjoyed a lot of these games, and they're a lot, it's a lot of fun to be able to go through and uh, play more recent ones and give other game developers a chance and be able to witness certain creative uh, themes that that person tries to create, different characters, different story, different scenarios. Uh, they're just, uh, other than like indie games that end up just kind of being very generic, RPG Maker games always have that way of being a little different from other games that you could play.
So other than that, I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the video so far, and I will see you next time. got into was Heta Only back in 2011, but I had no R idea RPG Maker was a thing until 2013 when an artist I followed on DeviantArt started posting fan art of it. Though I'd say the first actual RPG Maker that I knew was from that program would be Eve back around late 2013, early 2014 along with The Witch's House and Masao. So that was mainly when I really started getting into the fandom though. I actually made created an OC around that time, like my final year of high school just for fun. And it wasn't actually I guess my fondest memory of this was really first getting RPG Maker VX Ace, just playing around. It was really fun seeing my character move around even if it was just very basic movement. That was uh, Trimer Ray and I just created the Tumblr blog there for fun. It was just a hobby and it really was cool though meeting other people that was into RPGM since as much as I like games, I can't really play them at all, which explains a lot really, so... I'd say that, and as well, there's a lot of games. I guess my fondest memories as well was just seeing like all the creativity in this community, seeing games released like every year, such as Pocket Mirror, Aria's Story, like Living Playground. So it was all just really cool. And I'm um, lost as well. I'd s lost as well. I guess there's a lot of games I was really into. My Top one would be the Made of Feral Heights, which no one really knows about. I highly recommend it though, it's really uh, cute. So anyway, it was nice uh, speaking here. Bye!
There's a lot of deep memories people have of these games. Now my deepest, fondest memories of RPG. The first game I was really engrossed with, and it isn't RPG Maker, but Wolf RPG Editor, is Misao. I really found myself so attached to the environment, being in a school that sucked away into another world, in which we're in a B-horror movie scenario. With the protagonist being the only character alongside Onigawara and Library Lady, that knows what they are doing in this bizarre scenario of same of one who's cursed the school and its inhabitants. The female protagonist's smug look when she forgets to save Yoshino shows a comedic side to the horror all around us, alongside with Mr. Soda being... Mr. Soda. You've got to have a chance to really hate on a character in Miyasa to have vibrance in its story, as if they were a real life person, and without the sadistic actions that Mr. Soda did, we wouldn't have felt as much pain for Misao as we wouldn't have done if he didn't do what he did. Misao being this lonely girl in school who got picked on emotionally by Toma, if you know what I mean, along with being bullied and beaten up by Yoshino and her friends, I felt like I wanted to go into that school and protect Misao from both Yoshino and Mr. Soda from these horrors that they have orchestrated. And when a game immerses you as if you're in the scenario that the characters are in, you know you've played a game that can pull at your heartstrings. Not everyone's cup of tea, but I loved playing Misao and discovering every possible way to die in the definitive edition of Misao. The second game I want to talk about is Aria Story, which I feel in the community despite being quite popular is an underrated underappreciated gem. Aria Story combined both cute and horror aspects and really gave the player a comforting but at the same time terrified aura when going to a rabbit, when exploring the many different areas of the game. You are witnessing a story with an individual that loves the environment they are in because of books. The original OCTs of the soundtrack in the game helps absorb the player into the emotions that the game portrays. One track I remember that's etched to my soul is the track called Heartful Sorrow. When going into the segment of the game where you get the sun and moon keys, I think it's Heartful Sorrows or Heart Sorrows, something like that. 
That track stopped me pressing any buttons on the keyboard and I took in on how beautiful it was. It placed tears into my eyes. Into? Out of my eyes? <laughs> the wind blowing the bright particles on the screen shows a flow, a moment, a memory etched into the soul of a player like no other moment can. You feel at peace. The endings of Arya's story were spectacular, especially the updated version where Arya broke the fourth wall and addressed the player. Moments like that where a character talks directly to the player with evil schematics, while at the same time being comedic is just something else. Truly amazing. The last game that encapsulated me into RPG Maker games, well there are so many, but just selecting three is very difficult, is The Witch's House. This to me is a game that so many people who have played it has also praised it in more than one way. For Witch's House is a game that's highly likely going to put you into tears when playing through the true ending of the game for your first time. Like Hunter, you don't know what's transpired beforehand. You don't know that the body of your daughter has the soul of another. The one you have shot is the body of another person who has the soul of your daughter. And in turn, you killed your daughter. If only you knew what's happened between Viola and Ellen, you'd know what you did was the worst thing ever. The puzzles, scares, and size of the game itself is astonishing. A game that has a wonderful set of puzzles that portrays the story of the witch's house. When you get the red shoes, for example, you are witnessing one of the many ways which Ellen killed her friends to feed the demon. The scares of the game come from everything around you, from the legless girl furiously crawling to you, to glass shattering, to the skull that wants to kill you after placing the book of death, and many, many more things that are after you. To me, the witch's house, no matter how old it gets, will remain as an all-time classic. And if you want to explore more into the game story, consider reading the diary of Ellen, along with purchasing the Witch's House MV. You also get a harder difficulty in the MV version, which has changes to the puzzles, along with more ways to meet a horrible demise. And to really give you the feels of that true ending once more, I'm going to show you now the extra mode cutscene. Thank you.
That scene, when you saw it for the first time, sunk your heart downwards. The hopelessness and despair you felt for Viola shows that the love, the passion behind RPG Maker games are real. And they are just as strong as any other community's love for their games. If you've made it this far in the video, wholeheartedly thank you so much. Something else that has built over the years that I've been making videos of a huge list of games are the friends that I've made along the way. The journey I'm on with all of you, the love for playing RPG Maker games, the passion for creating RPG Maker games, the emotions felt when witnessing characters in despair in RPG Maker games. That's what RPG Maker games are about. The experience of playing them, the passion behind building them, and the passion behind sharing your experiences to others who also love these games. It's a journey that can't be made in the moment, but through years of love and playing them. Through this journey, the people who make these games are some of the most selfless, wonderful individuals I've spoken to. The people who play these games, including developers, sharing their stories and what they love about certain titles. And admittedly through this video, Umaniki, The Witch's House and Eve being three prominent titles spoken about. These and many many other games bring people together to form this community. The translators too, who've also translated some of the most memorable titles that we know. They are also a part of our journeys because without them, we wouldn't have witnessed these games. Thank you everyone for playing these games. And also a huge thank you to everyone for making me feel at home in this community. There hasn't been a single community that's been behind me as much as this community. And it really shows when people come to me for thank yous, for advice, for requests to play a game, to play their game. It's humbling, warming, heartwarming. Other words that could be similar to those. And no other words could ever portray how happy I am and how thankful I am to everyone who's been on this journey with me along with being alongside everyone else's journeys. This video isn't a me thing. This is an everyone thing, including me. And I've always aimed for your love of these games, your interests in the videos you've watched of the various amount of content creators out there to ring true. Look out for one another during these trying times. 2020 has been an abysmal year, but the aim of this video, I hope, is to bring some enlightenment to our lives, to bring some enlightenment to your experiences at the moment. Because these are troubling times for all of us, no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're doing. There's always going to be something in the way. There's always going to be a challenge, a hurdle, a new game that's going to be there. But, no matter if it's negative or positive, we must overcome this all together. Not physically together, but emotionally and as a community together. Thank you so much for watching all of this and take care of yourselves.